Okay. Uh, just, just waiting. Yeah. So, good evening, everyone. I can see you know, all the things are set. So, technically, I, all all the things are set. So, let's start, students. A very very good evening to all of you. So, today we'll be taking image-based questions. Okay. And uh, this will that this nowadays we have lots of image-based questions. So, it is it is very important for us to understand all those image based questions and uh, uh, I'll be also seeing uh, the, the answers of yours. So without wasting time students, let's start. So not waste time. So uh, the first question for you is uh, order for the margin of error in the graph given above is. Just see the graph and just try to answer the questions. Is it uh, means uh, a 3 is greater than 2 is greater than 1 or 3 is greater than 1 is greater than 2 so basically you have three graphs 1 2 and 3 the sample size is also given just you have to you know uh, just based on margin of error means standard error you have to answer it whether the third graph the error will be more in third graph as compared to second as compared to one or it will be B or it will be C or it will be D. Just give a try students. I will be seeing your answers also if I am, yeah, let me check. So this is the question. So based on margin of error you have to choose the graphs are 3, 2 and 1. The sample size for third graph is 600. The sample size for second graph is 800. Sample size for one is 1000. So based on that, what do you think? What will be the margin of error? So if I can see, uh, I have not seen any responses till now. Okay, let's not waste time. So how do we answer this? So you have to also understand as uh, as the sample size decreases, the possibility of error is more and as the sample size increases, the possibility of error is less. Now if you see in the graph, third, the sample is 600, second graph it is 800 and first graph it, the sample is 1000. So as I said students, the, as you increase the sample size, the margin of error is less. The best, best way to understand this concept is when we do census enumeration, we count each and every individual. No? So there the possibility of error is very less because you are counting each and every member of the country. But when you take a sample, there is a possibility of error. So that error is related to sample size. As you increase the sample, the possibility of error will be less. Now in this question students, so Parag has answered C. So Parag you have answered C, no it will not be C, no, just try the third graph, the third one, if you see, the third has got, uh, if I can, yeah, the third has got sample size 600, second has got sample size 800, one has got sample size 1000, so the margin of error will be in third more as compared, then there will be more error in second and then the least error you will find in one first graph because the sample is more. So the answer should be A because as you increase the sample size the error will be less. Yeah, just opposite, opposite. It is inversely proportional. You can, you can remember in that way. So the best way of understanding is what is the formula Parag? Formula is standard error of mean is what? Standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. So square root of sample means sample size is the denominator. So margin of error becomes inversely related to sample size. So as your sample size decreases, error increases. As your sample size in increases, your error decreases. It is just opposite. 
so it's a very tricky thing but just think logically also if you are taking 10 students as a sample and you are giving a result and when you are taking 100 students and then you are giving a result so 100 students since the numbers are more so numbers are more so there uh, the probability the error will be less when you are giving your judgment only by 10 students by judging only taking 10 students then the error will be more the numbers as you increase the number your your errors will decrease okay now this is the second one Parag and other students just try in the diagram depicted below how much is the area between point A and B so point A is mean minus 3 standard deviation B is mu, uh, means mean plus 3 standard deviation so so how much is the area between point A and B on either side of the mean it is 68.3% 95.4%, 99.7%, 102.5%. So what do you think? This is the simplest one you can answer. Yes. So we'll not waste time. Sunita and Sunita is saying A 68%. No, Sunita, this is your mean. This is your mean. Okay this 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 side we move then it is one standard deviation this side we move then it is huh, one standard deviation on this side so minus one standard deviation plus one standard deviation so this entire area is 68 percent okay means mu plus mean plus minus one standard deviation covers 68 percent mean plus minus two standard deviation covers 95 percent approximately 95.4 and mean plus minus 3 standard deviation covers 99.7%. So your answer should be 99.7%. Okay. So everyone has answered correctly. Good. So only thing you have to just turn uh, no, a student. This is the easiest one. Just you have to uh, understand that this, this area is 68%. Plus, uh, minus 2 and plus 2, 95.4%. And minus 3 and plus 3 standard deviation is 99.7 percent now <coughs> one of the question in this time need pg they ask they ask this question you know they ask normally how do they ask questions so if you understand this means whenever we take measures of dispersion so for student it's a normal distribution curve where mean median mode coincide you now it is a bell shaped curve the standard deviation is square root of variance and just opposite becomes variance is equal to square root of standard deviation. So if you take one standard deviation plus minus it covers roughly around 68% of the values means 68% of the values will fall in between that uh, uh, lower limit and upper limit. If mean plus minus two standard deviation if they say means 95% of the value falls in between that that is the meaning you cannot means what we are trying to say if you take a height on an average height of 100 students so you say 5.8 is the average height so that is not indicative of all the students so what we take we, we take a range you no know, confidence limit lower limit and upper limit that is just by mean plus minus one standard deviation so if i say if i take mean plus minus one standard deviation it means 68 percent 68 students out of 100 students will fall in that range 95 percent when we take the 95 percent of the entire value will fall in mean plus minus two standard deviation so one of the question related to this was asked in this time also this pg or this piece need 20 pg they have asked this so if you understand how this uh, is important because one value taking mean is cannot represent the entire thing so you take standard deviation so just you want to say how much on the lower end side on the higher end side so we take one standard deviation two standard deviation three standard deviation so this is the way we try to give the representation of data okay okay now the next question students and just try this one easiest one the data description shown below is referred to as you have a picture here one two three four five six and then this is uh, numbers 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, all those. So what do you think? Is it stem and leaf diagram? Is it forest plot? It is box and whisker plot? It is funnel plot? Just try. So Parag is saying A, a B, 
forest plot and Maya Maya is saying A. So we have uh, Sunita is also saying A. So we have two of two answers: stem and leaf diagram, forest plot. So uh, Debashish Panda has also answered stem and leaf. Yes. So this picture basically represent stem and leaf diagram. Absolutely correct. Now students, you have to because it is not a forest plot. Because if you remember the last image based questions where we discussed how we take forest plot. Forest plot is basically done for in meta analysis where we plot all the studies and we take our order ratio, generally order ratio, and then we see how the values are. No. So we see you know, individual individual values with their confidence interval. Then we summarize it with a diamond shaped structure if you remember the last class. So that is forest plot. But obvious it is not a box and whisker plot because you require a box and a whisker lower end side and upper end side. And uh, that basically represents quartile and lower limit upper limit. It's not a funnel plot that is also part of meta analysis. So even if you don't know about stem and leaf diagram if you are not aware you can you can just answer this stem and leaf diagram because it is not a forest plot, it is not a box and whisker plot, it is not a funnel plot. So it looks like it is stem and leaf diagram. Now let's try to understand what is stem and leaf diagram. Now basically stem and leaf diagram is now is to display, it's a display of discrete data. At times it also display continuous data. Forget this, just try to take an example. No? I'll just give you a, a simple example. There was a, a person named Sam. He what he did, he recorded the jumps, long jump made by all his friends, and, and got the result as if you can see, got the result as 2.3, 2.5, 2.5, 2.7, and 2.8, 3.2, 3.6, 3.6. This was the jumps, no different different types of a jump made by their friends. And then what he decided, he decided to make a stem and leaf plot. So what he did, he created stem 2, 3, 4, 5 and he created leaf. Now what is this 2, 3, 4, 5 from where he got these numbers? So what he did, so the, the jump was in decimals, you see 2.3, 2.5. So the number before the decimal, he took it as stem. See what he did, 2, 3, so what is the number before the decimal? We have 2, 3, 4 and 5. So 2, 3, 4 and 5 he created as a stem. And then after the decimal, after the point, he took it as leaf. Okay. Now you see 2.3, so he added here 3. 2.5, he added here 5. Again 2.5, he added here 5. 2.7, again he added 7. 2.8, he again added 8. So what he did, basically all the two points, 2.3, 2.5, 2.5, 2 he created as before the decimal, he took it as stem and after the decimal, he entered it as leaf. So it is like that. If you take for third, 3, 3 he wrote here as a stem and 3.6, see 3.6, 3.2, 3.6 he wrote here. For 4, 4.5 he wrote here and for 5, there was 0 after decimal, so he made this. So he created stem and leaf. This is the way he created stem and leaf. Okay. I hope it is clear how to create stem and leaf. It depends upon how you are trying to create. In this example, after decimal he is treating it as leaf, before decimal he is treating as stem. So this is the way we create stem and leaf diagram. Okay. This is the simplest way of understanding how stem and leaf diagram is created. Now students, when we are reading stem and leaf, let's not, let's discuss this Venn diagram also because this is also at times they give image based question, what is Venn diagram. Now Venn diagram is also very easy, just take a simplest example, there are few players who are play soccer, there are few players who play tennis. Like if you see soccer, Alex, Kazi, Drew, Hunter play soccer. And there are people who are playing tennis, Cassie, Drew and Jed. Now if you see Cassie, Drew are playing both soccer and tennis. So when we merge this, what we find that Cassie and Drew is playing both soccer and tennis. So this is a way to represent the data and it is called Venn diagram, simple. 
it looks the word looks very this but it becomes very easy which is common in between that if you remember test in series and test in parallel also when we discuss sensitivity and specificity there also we have this you no know, uh, this sort of venn diagram we can create there also so this is also a way of representation where you no know, cash in this example kashi and drew are uh, playing both soccer and tennis so this is venn diagram okay next students try be ready observe the following curves what will happen to sensitivity and specificity if curve changes from blue to red so first there was a blue intersection and then you have a red intersection so the question is asking if the blue intersection changes to red intersection what will happen to this whether there will be sensitivity and specificity will increase sensitivity specificity will decrease sensitivity increase specificity decrease sensitivity decrease specificity increase so what do you think come on devashi sarita prachi sunita maya parag and others just give a try so question basically i'll explain it there is a blue intersection now when the blue intersection changes to red intersection what will be the uh, doctor is saying c okay so we have got three different answers to okay okay raman is saying sensitivity decreases specificity increases okay okay so we have c d many mix answers okay now students forget the answer now let's not you know let's not discuss the answer first let's take this 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 is the graph okay so this is patient with disease of oh, sorry this is patient let me take let me write it then it becomes easy yeah so uh, this is your patient with disease this is your patient without disease two statements i will give students first statement is that you have to remember and this is a shortcut of solving the question second i will be giving the explanation first statement i say i have color i have circled it patient with disease means these people are suffering from disease and these people are not suffering from disease okay now those people who are suffering from disease so this is the graph for example so what and this is the cut off line here this is the this is the intersection of so this is the intersection is here let's create let's let's put this line like this here yes forget this dotted line this is the cut off line okay this is the intersection so it is the cut off line now what i say this cut off line students so short the one statement direct statement you should always think is that this side is patient with disease means positive means they are diseased this side patient without disease means negative so one thing always try to put true positive this part and this line this this part also put positive only but don't put since you have already put in positive so it becomes false positive so positive true positive or false positive should be this side and this side blindly put true negative because this is uh, uh, without disease and this side put false negative so this is not a explanation this is i am just telling you to just put this value so you can understand what part of graph is what so this is true negative false negative this is true positive false positive now if you understand the, if you have put this now i'll just go to the question just see students this was the blue intersection this here okay so this is the line so this is your this is true positive because this is disease based on what i said this is tp so you will say based on your what you are saying so this is fp and this is tn and this is fn i said where this side negative put true and true negative and false negative this side is true positive put false positive now students you see the intersection has come down from here to here now when it comes here so your false negative is this 
and your true false positive is this means your false negative is getting less and your false positive is also getting less when this is getting less false negative so obviously your true positive will increase means your sensitivity is going to increase students when your false uh, the, when your false positive is decreasing this side then your true negative is increasing means your sensitivity specificity is also increasing so when the intersection from blue it has come to red your false positive and false negative has come down the moment your false positive and false negative comes down students your sensitivity and specificity increases think in that way is it clear or not so dharunish is absolutely right the answer is a the answer is not uh, b c d whatever you are saying answer is a sensitivity and specificity will increase okay so what i said what is the trick here this side is disease so always put positive true positive and false positive this side is not disease always put true negative and false negative and then you can see what is the answer because the intersection got down so your false negative and false positive was reducing so your negative uh, true negative and true positive has increased so your sensitivity and specificity increase now you can say what is the rational behind why are you putting this tp and fp blindly you can say this question to me but when you are solving question use this this is correct now i'll be explaining you the rational now see this is your true positives this is patient without disease this is your true positive okay this is your intersection now the intersection this happens to be true positive but but it has crossed this cut off line it has crossed this cut off line so the diagnostic test is is saying that you are false negative okay see this line start here students cut come like this till here it is no problem the moment the line comes this side the moment the line come this side so this area because this is falling this side this is the cut off line so you are saying that you are false negative okay this is the explanation you can justify this now if you start from this side true negative till intersection it is fine the moment it comes cross this intersection it becomes it should be true negative but the test is wrongly classifying as disease so it becomes false positive this is your explanation but forget the explanation or if you are not able to and uh, make understand you should know disease side put positive tp fp not disease side put tn fn true negative false negative and then try to understand all questions related to this graph this intersection graph you will be able to answer okay great let's move now the next question is the transmission depicted in figure is of just c is it dengue is it japanese encephalitis it is kaisenur forest disease is it ebola just give a try students okay so this one is easy so we have a mosquito we have a amplifier host pig we have again mosquito again we have this bird and again this is going on accidentally this this human beings are also infected so if we see so you are absolutely right everyone see uh, the infected mosquito bites an animal and pass the je virus so virus multiply inside the body cell mosquito bites infected animal pick up the je virus again it goes to the bird and it keeps on circulatingly circulating accidentally this mosquito can bite the human being and it can cause japanese encephalitis so we had a question on this also this time in 2020 pg good very good now identify the larva shown in the photograph can you identify what type, which type of larva it is is it anopheles is it culex it is mansonia is it aedes so daruni has answered a anopheles anyone a okay everyone a very good yes the larva is anopheles absolutely correct no doubt so because it is resting parallel the the 
differentiating point is it is resting parallel to under surface of water so that is anopheles if it is perpendicular it is oblique i'll just show the picture okay before that just identify this mosquito first yes no siphon tube yes yes Debashi. i'll just go to that picture i'll explain don't wait just take all these questions first then we'll go to the detailed explanation what is this what type of mosquito is this is it uh, sandfly? It is anopheles? It is Aedes? It is Culex? Just give a try. So, uh, so anopheles? Surya is saying Aedes. Okay. Dharuni is saying anopheles. Okay. How it is anopheles? Yeah. Femida Ami is saying D. It is Culex. How it is anopheles first? Where the wings are spotted? You, I cannot see any wings spotted first of all. So if the wings are not spotted, so this is not anopheles. How it is AD? Where is there alternate black and white strips? I cannot see any alternate black and white strips. So it is not AD's. How it is sandfly? Based on the picture, if I say this is the surface. This is the surface. Okay. First of all, the wings are not spotted. So wings are not spotted. So you can rule out anopheles. It is not anopheles. Now in anopheles, what happens? The whole head, thorax, abdomen, whole is in straight line. And it sits and making an angle with the surface. Now this is what doing. The head and thorax is making an angle with the body. See, this is the angle. So this basically gives hunchback appearance. So this is hunchback appearance. So hunchback appearance, you can say it is found in Aedes also, it is found in Culex also. Yes, true. But it is not Aedes just because you don't have alternate black and white strips. So it is not Aedes. So we'll go with Culex. Okay, it is not sandfly. Now, can you identify this? Can you identify this? Then, then, then try to appreciate what was the difference between that and this. Now, doctor is saying C. How, how it is Aedes? Raman is saying Anopheles. Parag is saying Anopheles. Yes. Now, let's try to see students. Just forget what you have read. Just see what is you are seeing in the picture. This is the surface. I will create a line. This is the surface. Okay. The mosquito is sitting you know, like this. So it, it is making an angle with this, with the surface. And that is 45 degree angle. So it is sitting and the whole body, you see the whole head, neck, thorax is straight. So the whole body is straight. So this is the pattern which the anopheles mosquito sit first. It makes an angle with the surface of 45 degree. So it is, it is, it is sitting, the whole body is straight. It makes an angle of 45 degree. And the third, the most important, the wings. You see the wings. The wings are spotted. So when wings are spotted, it becomes anopheles. Yes. So this is anopheles. So what are the differentiating point based on what you see? Forget what you have read. You can see it is making an angle of 45 degree. You can see it is the whole body is straight. And you can see wings are spotted. So you go with anopheles. Why go with Aedes culex? Don't go with Aedes culex. Now see this. Now identify this. What is? And then all the three you can understand very nicely. Which type of mosquito is this? Come on, Utkarsh, Raghu. Yes. Now everyone is answering C. Again, you see, this is the sun. Just I'll just tell you what is what we are seeing. You can see black and white strips. So black and white strip you see. So our answer goes towards Aedes. First point. Second is this is the surface. The mosquito is sitting. How is the mosquito is sitting? The mosquito is sitting like this. So it is making an angle here. So it gives an hunchback appearance. So hunchback appearance, you can say hunchback appearance was also seen in, let's go back, in Culex also. It is also sitting like this. So you have hunchback appearance in Culex. 
you have a hunchback appearance in 80s the only difference is that you don't have alternate black and white strips but if you go to 80s this becomes self explanatory you have see white spots black spots so this is 80s okay like yes it is called tiger mosquito nuisance is called uh, uh, means culex is called nuisance mosquito anopheles is called sophisticated mosquito you know anopheles are given names sophisticated mosquitoes okay now what we have discussed students just try to understand in resting position the anopheles the whole body is in line and makes an angle to the resting surface so if you see if you remember the picture it the whole body the the tail is tail in the air posture you can say tail in the air posture tail in the air posture means students what what is tail in the air posture see this is the tail this is the tail and it is in air so it is saying tail in the air posture and the body is held horizontal so it gives hunchback appearance wings are unspotted it is also same hunchback appearance the only difference between it is and culex becomes it is black in color with alternate white bands so it is also called as you all people are saying that it is tiger mosquito silver spotted mosquito wings are unspotted wings are unspotted so the distinguishing feature between all three mosquitoes are black and white strip on the body go with ads if you don't have black and white patches and the body and hunchback appearance you can see and wings are unspotted go with culex but wings are spotted the whole body is making an angle with the surface looks like a tail in the air posture then go with anopheles okay okay now can you identify this the life cycle now if you have understood this other one you can understand this also the life cycle shown in the picture this is the picture so you have egg you have larva you have pupa and you have a mosquito so all the four stages is shown here now students you have to identify the life cycle of the picture is of culex anopheles aedes mansonite so parag is saying b anopheles Purnima is also saying anopheles, so everyone agrees with anopheles. Even if students, you do, suppose you are not remembering this egg, so you is because just now we have solved one question. This is larva. See, it is parallel to the surface. So this is larva. This is for anopheles. And see the mosquito. The whole is it's like no, it's making it's straight. It makes an angle with the surface. Or whatever, forty-five degree. Whole body is straight. Wings are spotted. So you should go with. anopheles now why to leave this egg also see you see this is spindle shape this is boat shape you have a lateral float see lateral floats now you have this is the uh, larva so you have palmate hairs so by this you can rep, you can distinguish that it is anopheles yes it is lateral floats laid singly absolutely right okay this is anopheles good what is this come on this will be the last one debashish debashish panda please answer this what is this other everyone please try the life cycle shown in the picture is oh the answer i have shown oh god so culex okay so eggs are in rafts see the eggs are cigar shaped so picture is self explanatory the eggs are cigar shaped it is you are it is in the shape of rafts egg rafts and it is in clusters then see the larva it is making an oblique you know it is not parallel it's an oblique see then you, this is your pupa and this is your mosquito the adult mosquito again it makes an angle so this we go with culex egg lays in group even if you don't remember red lids in group rafts whatever you, show, you can see you know the picture is self explanatory so it is in groups this is oblique this is uh, the the siphon tubes are long and this is the makes makes an angle so this becomes culex yeah now see the picture so this is your lateral floats this is anopheles so we have discussed 
this is egg grafts, this is of culex, the larva is oblique and see the sitting posture of mosquito, this is anophilis, this is culex. Okay. So just this one will be last just to because larva we have understood, adult mosquito we have understood. Let's take about the egg. As many students have said correctly, you see this is your eggs are laid in singles. It is board shape. You have lateral floats here students. In culex what happened? It is no, it is the egg is cigar shaped and it is in rafts. Okay, board shaped mass, egg rafts. If you see ADs, it is our lids in single. They do not possess lateral floats like anopheles. They don't have, but they pose a small bubble-like structure, which which helps them to float. And this is Mansonia. This is Mansonia. Mansonia. See the eggs are single uh, egg or flask shape. This is like a flask shape. So you put that picture in the mind. Then even if they pose you a question based on egg also, you you will be able to answer. So it is very important for our student to distinguish between the different you know, life cycle of the mosquitoes egg, larva, pupa and adult and normally they ask adult but you never know nowadays they can ask larva also they may ask egg also so why to leave all those options let's try to understand about how egg of anopheles looks like how egg of culex look like how egg of edis look like how egg of mansonia looks like okay so this is the way we uh, so this is this was the first session uh, in uh, in coming days i'll be also taking image based question image based questions is not only because image based questions are asked image based question is also help helps it helps us including me you everyone students to understand the topic in a better way so that there comes it's not only going to help you to solve questions based on image it is also going to help you in solving understanding the, the topic also now if we have seen this egg of anopheles we'll never forget now we have lateral floats in culex you don't have in egg in eddies you don't have because we have seen the picture if you don't see and if you read only then you make those picture as a as a part of imagination which 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 you're bound to forget but when you have seen, you are not going to forget students. Okay. So, thank you for joining all students. It was great. Uh, we, I will be also taking second part of image based questions. Believe me, it is very interesting. And I thought to put other questions, but I thought let's clear the doubt of mosquitoes because it is very difficult. Then we will take other sand flies, takes and other things also in, in the next image based class. So, do join. An Academy is a very good platform where we have the discussions, we have foundation course going on. If you have not joined, you can join those sessions. It is available. So with that note, students, thank you very much for joining and uh, take care. Bye-bye. Okay, the next class, students, the next class is on 7th or 8th. Just check. Just follow me on an academy, the 7th or 8th and I will be planning my special class also. Please join. It is time will be 7.30 to 8, 8 only students. So don't worry about that. Time will be 7.30 to 8. We will be informing you well in advance. Okay. Thank you for joining. Take care students. Bye-bye.